what I'd like to talk about in my remarks is uh, the stories that have been uh, missed this year by the media. The media has done a great job of, of hyping the internet and getting a lot of people interested in it and a lot of people excited about it. But they've told a few stories slightly incorrectly or in a confusing manner or have left certain things out. And so since I've got a podium for a half hour, I'm going to do what I've always wanted to do, correct the, the newspaper. <laughs> um, first misconception, a lot of people are talking about cyberspace and the information superhighway and this idea that we're going to create this alternate environment that we're all going to live on and everything's going to be done there. And that the measure of our success will be that everything is done there. And we should be gearing all our attention to create this place that's completely independent of the rest of the world. That's crazy. That's just absolutely insane. Would you start a business that only did business on the telephone? In other words, you wouldn't have a store. You wouldn't talk to anybody in person. You wouldn't send mail or receive mail. You would only deal on the telephone. Of course not. Would you have a business that only had a store but didn't use a telephone and, and didn't use, use the mail system? Of course not. The, the, the picture of every mature business is they use every conceivable channel available to them. They use the mail intelligently, they use the phone system intelligently, they use video intelligently, and they use the internet and cyberspace intelligently. So let's get rid of this idea that we're trying to create some <coughs> alternate world uh, that's going to be completely independent of all the other medias that exist. What we're really going to trying to do is find a place for the internet amongst all these other existing medias to integrate and, and let, it, let, the, let the different medias support and coordinate with each other. Second crazy thing that I hear going around a lot is how are people going to find out about what's on the internet? You know, how many places can we post on the internet to tell people about what we're doing? Well, how do people find out about your telephone number? And how do people find out the location of your store? Okay? You advertise and you use every available means. You use television commercials or radio commercials or direct mail campaigns or space ads in magazines or you put on conferences or t-shirts or all the other things that we do to get people to dial our telephone are the things that we'll do to get people to dial our, uh, dial up our website. Right? So we don't have to worry that, that there's not enough advertising opportunities on the internet itself to get people to come to our site. We just have to look out at all the other medias that are available and use those to drive people to our site. Make sense? Okay. The, the other uh, story that the media I think has gotten slightly wrong uh, is more of a missed story. And this has to do with the computer bulletin board phenomenon. Um, there are currently, according to Jack Rickard, the publisher of Boardwatch Magazine, somewhere between 50 and 70,000 computer bulletin boards in operation in the United States today. And those are, those are public boards that regular people are setting up. That doesn't count corporate boards or government boards or any of those things. So what's a bulletin board? Well, it's a mini America Online or a mini CompuServe. So a guy and maybe some of his friends, they set up a PC, they buy some BBS software, they buy some phone lines and some modems, and they've got an online service. And there are 50,000 people out there doing this, 50,000 plus. And that's the story, and it's not really been covered. But the big story that, that, that the internet press missed this year is this summer, all the bulletin board software makers have announced products that will allow these little bulletin boards to become internet service providers. So you've got 50 to 70,000 entities, which probably represent maybe 150,000, 200,000 technically knowledgeable people. Some of them do have business savvy and have been able to build good businesses with limited resources of computer bulletin boards. Now suddenly, overnight, they're going to be able to provide internet accounts in all kinds of places that so far we haven't been able to get the internet access to for regular people. So there's going to be a flood of internet services in the next year or two. Um, and Jack, who's a pretty sober-minded individual, thinks that there are going to be an additional 10 million slip accounts uh, opened up on the internet in the next year. Why? Because we're going to be able to do it. And we weren't able to do it before. We're going to be able to do it at a cost that's reasonable.